How are we doing, everyone? We've got Norwich on Saturday night, a half five kickoff at Carrow Road. After the performance against Young Boys, Young Boys against Young Boys, one all. All 11 players rested from the game against Crystal Palace. That 1 0 win in Ralph Ragnick's first game in charge. What changes are you expecting for this game against Norwich? Are you expecting any changes? What I'm going to do in this video is run through my predicted 11 that I think Ragnick will start against Norwich on Saturday night. And as I said, he chose, uh, he prioritised, sorry, getting to know his squad against Young Boys rather than the victory. We could have played Ronaldo, we could have played Rashford, we could have played Sancho, we could have played Fred McTominay and probably won that game against Young Boys. Instead, we rotated and he learned a lot about players that maybe aren't quite ready to go inside his starting 11 in the Premier League. Let's run through this now. I'll start in defence, go into midfield, look at the attack. You make sure you let me know in the comments below what you think. But let's head straight into this one and let's start in defence. And this is the back five I think we're going to be seeing from Ralph Randick against Norwich. I think it'll be De Gea in goal. I'm going with Delot and Tellez still as the fullbacks. And I'm going Maguire and Lindov in defence. Now, De Gea, obviously he's going to start in the Premier League. I thought Henderson did quite well, if I'm being completely honest. Sh showed that sort of sweeper-keeper role uh, against um, Young Boys. But I don't think he's going to dethrone De Gea from the Premier League. Not just yet, anyway. Uh, but Henderson can be happy with himself. In terms of the fullbacks, now there's so many questions that have been asked about Manchester United's fullbacks this year. And if we're looking at players that are in form in this Manchester United team, you really have got to say that Tellez is bang in form. And you've got to say probably Diogo Delot, you could argue, either Fred or Delot are the two most informed players. Delot's really shown a really aggressive side to his game, which we know is naturally very good at, but also something that he's improved in the last couple of weeks is covering the space around here. Positionally, he's been very good as a right back. And I think he absolutely deserves his place in that team. Now, Luke Shaw, I think Luke Shaw played okay against Young Boys. Got an assist within 10 minutes. Don't think he did himself any harm with that performance. But I also think that Tedders are going to start this game. That's just what my gut is telling me. And maybe I'm speaking a bit too early because we'll hear confirmation from Rannick in his pre-match press conference. But it doesn't matter. This is what my predicted 11 is. There might be one or two changes because of team news, but I'm still going with my 11 here. Now, of course, there's question marks about this. And the biggest question mark I think all of you will have is the fact that where is Eric Bailly? He's not even on the bench there. That's how stupid this is. Let me just get Eric Bailly down here. Because Bailly, for a lot of people, could have been man of the match against uh, Young Boys. I know so many of you will say, Sam, get Maguire away from this team. Just get Eric Bailly in. And I just don't think that's realistically going to happen. I think Maguire, if we're looking at and the measure of control we had against Crystal Palace, I thought it was very impressive. And I thought Maguire and Lindelof both individually had good games for United. I would think, we'll, but I think we'll see those two start there. Now, this man we know is not quite fit enough to start just yet. But as soon as Varane is available, I think you're probably going to see that. I might be wrong. It might be Maguire that comes out. But I think you're probably going to see Maguire and Varane. At least that's what we thought to start of the season. But for this game against Norwich, I am going for Maguire and Lindelof as the two centre-backs. What do you think about that in the comments? You let me know what you think. But I think it's going to be a back five there. As I said, let's get Baran off the pitch. Let's not confuse things. I think it'll be a back five there of De Gea and goal with Delot and Tellez as the two fullbacks with Maguire and Lindov as the two centre-backs. Now, let's quickly head on to midfield. But before I do, please stick around so I can say a big thank you to our sponsors. Big up to One Football for continuing to support United People's TV. So make sure you go over and you support One Football. If you haven't already downloaded the app, the link is in the description. It's free to download. And over this mad festive period, you can get all the Manchester United news, match updates, team updates, match stats, match reactions, everything you need about Manchester United and all the latest transfer news ahead of it. what could be a busy January transfer window for United. And get it all in the one football app all you got to do is follow the link in the description as i said one football big supporters of united people's tv so go and show them some love if you haven't already downloaded the app the link is in the description but let's talk about this midfield eh big shout out there to one football thank you very much for supporting and continuing to support united people's tv but yeah we've got to talk about the midfield now the man who as i said either diogo delot's probably the most informed player at united or it's fred now, who's going to play alongside him in midfield? I think we all know the answer, right? Right now, it's Fred and McTominay. And I don't think anybody would really argue against it. Against Crystal Palace, we had a measure of control. Now, of course, we all know there's question marks about whether or not... I mean, there's not question marks. We just know Scott McTominay's weak at bringing the ball forward. Scott McTominay, when it comes to 
progressive dribbles, when it comes to progressive carries, when it comes to bringing the ball forward, he is very weak in comparison to Donny van der Beek. But Donny van der Beek, in my opinion, I don't think he did enough. I don't think he did enough against um, young boys to take Matomane out of that team and do that. I just don't think he did. I might be wrong. You might disagree with me, but I just don't personally think he did. And I think we did have a real measure of... That's the big buzzword for, for Randick is control. And I thought we had control with that midfield too against Crystal Palace. Of course, there are massive limitations to McTominay's game. But as a partnership, they definitely had control. And of course, we have to talk about this man who really is... We all, we all tipped him. It wasn't very difficult. Let's be completely honest. It wasn't very difficult to say and see that Fred was going to be a better and improved player underneath Ralph Rannick. And we definitely saw that against Crystal Palace. And I think we'll see it against Norwich. Fred, he, sh yeah, man, he really likes this pressing system. Pressing is his natural game. Interceptions, I call him the, the disruptor, the wasp, the terrier. You call him what you want to call him, Fred. We saw the best of Fred against Crystal Palace. And we also saw him score from the outside of the box with his right foot. I mean, that's just... What sort of genius is Ralph Ray? That's well, if, if Ole had Juju, that's complete Ragnik Juju, for sure. Fred scoring there. I definitely want to see that as a midfield two against Norwich. I don't want to see this as a midfield two for Manchester United in the long term. In January, if we come in, we get Hydara. Hydara could come straight in there and play alongside Fred. Hell, in the long term, maybe even Bellingham there, but that's probably a pipe dream. But clearly, right now, in my opinion, Manchester United's midfield, it's the best when it's those two. You could potentially throw Matic into the mix here against Norwich. Maybe Matic for McTominay, but after Matic played 90 minutes as centre-back, I don't think Matic is going to be playing two games in three days. Not at his age, absolutely not. So that's the midfield I expect to see against Norwich on Saturday night. With Delot and Tellez as full-backs, McGuire and Lindelof there as the two centre-backs, and McTominay and Fred. So it's, I think that's the exact same team there so far that started against Crystal Palace. And then we move up front. Will there be any changes? This is the front four that I've gone for. I have gone for Sancho and Bruno as the two attacking midfielders, the two number 10s. So that's the same as Crystal Palace. But as you can see, there's one change up front and that comes in the form of a very informed player, really. When you think about it, he got an assist for the winner against Crystal Palace for Fred and he got a cracking goal. Cracking goal against Young Boys. That's Mason Greenwood. Mason Greenwood He's got, we all know, man. I don't need to tell you about his star qualities. He's not, a, he's not a talent anymore. He's just a star. He's only 20, but he's already done so much already in a, in a young career. And I don't know how good he can get. I really, really don't. I, I, I wouldn't want to put a ceiling on it because he's just that good. Now, I want to see Greenwood start this game. Marcus Rashford is a man who, he looks like he's struggling for form at the moment, doesn't he? You could potentially see the exact same 11 that we saw against, uh, Crystal Palace, I think it was Rashford on this side, but they kind of drifted in between. But the key to Ronaldo for Randick was the fact that Ronaldo played with a partner. Now, whether that partner is going to be Rashford or not, or Greenwood, it remains to be seen. Could it be Anthony Martial? Maybe it could be Martial, but I don't think he's been training properly. I think what um, Cavani's not 100% fit. I think Cavani's starting full training with Manchester United next week. That's what um, Ragnick said in the build-up to the Young Boys game. So I imagine that stayed the same, but I would definitely start Greenwood. You could say, Sam, you know, he played 90 minutes against Young Boys. Do you think he should start here? Maybe he won't for that reason. Maybe we'll see Greenwood introduced after like the 50th, 60th minute. But in my opinion, I would start him here. Now, what's your question marks about Sancho and about Bruno? I would say Bruno is somebody who, even when he's been playing poorly over the last few months, he's still contributing goals and assists. His, his, his direct contrib contribution to goals is insane. And I don't see him going anywhere away from the starting eleven, and I wouldn't want him to. I think the more that we play in this system, the more he'll get used to it, the more that he won't, he'll realise that, oh, you don't have to just press like a headless chicken the whole game. You can do it. It's not always about just sprinting at everything. You can be smart about it. Manchester United, if you looked at the stats against Crystal Palace compared to our season so far, we actually ran less. We covered less distance, but... Manchester United had far more interceptions, triple the amount of interceptions in the opposition half in this area. So we worked smarter, not harder. A big buzzword, a big sort of mantra of my life. I think it's a mantra of everyone's life. It's not about working, not necessarily about working hard, it's about working smart. And that's what we did. I'm excited to see, continue to see how Sancho thrives in this sort of system. It was not as if it was bad against Crystal Palace, but maybe we expect him to be, see a bit more. And as Ragnick said, 
he believes these two positions here are the most intense inside this system because they have to cover so much ground up here to make sure that the press works properly. So Bruno and Sancho, I think both will start. So if you're looking at that as a starting 11, let's go full screen so you can see it. De Gea in goal with the lot and Tellez as a fullback. So Maguire and Lindelof as the two centre-backs. Matomane and Fred in midfield. Sancho and Bruno as the two number 10s. And Ronaldo and Greenwood as the two strikers. The same 4 triple two. I think we'll absolutely stick to that 4 triple two formation. And I think we should. I think we saw how much control we had there. Norwich, I believe, will be a harder game than Crystal Palace. Playing away, I think they've got maybe a couple of COVID issues. Not sure about that. But I think it will be tougher. Half five at Carrow Road. They're struggling uh, for points. But when you're a relegation threatened team, it's all about those games you can use at home. So I don't think it's going to be a walk in the park. I don't think it's going to be a breeze. But I'd be confident with that team. Certainly what we saw against Crystal Palace, more of the same here. I would start Greenwood for Rashford. That would be the only change I would make from the Crystal Palace team. But that's my predicted 11. What would yours be? You let me know in the comments below, as you always do. Make sure you drop a like on the video, ladies and gentlemen, please. And if you did enjoy the video, please consider subscribing. Join the United People's TV family. Until the game tomorrow, though, take it easy.